Hi, I'm Venkatesh Potluri here to talk about work to examine visual semantic understanding in blind and low vision technology users executed with Tarashe Grindelund, John E. Frelick, and Jennifer Mankoff from the Paul G. Allen School of Computer Science and Engineering at University of Washington. Visual semantics are attributes of user interfaces that convey aesthetics like spacing between different elements on the UI and that convey how to use the interface like the iconography of different elements on the UI. More broadly, visual semantics are everywhere, from editing the TikTok videos that we all post, to editing our websites, to making this very presentation. And in this work, we talk about visual semantics of user interfaces. Screen readers, accessibility technology that blind and low vision users use to access computers and smartphones, render the graphical user interface into synthesized speech or braille using the underlying semantics that software developers provide when building the graphical user interfaces. The screen readers that run on desktop use the keyboard as a primary input device, and the screen readers that run on smartphones use the touch screen as a primary input device. And these smartphone screen readers do allow for some degree of spatial exploration by voicing out the elements under a user's finger. To examine how people who are blind or have low vision understand visual semantics of user interfaces we, across uh, device platforms where we looked at both smartphones and computers and common usage tasks where we looked at both app usage and web browsing, we performed a qualitative study which had a semi-structured interview, screen reader tasks, and lo-fi prototyping activities. Performing these studies gave us a lot of insight into why people who are blind or have low vision feel visual semantics are important and in their, into their underlying mental models that the users had about visual semantics. Our participants felt that visual semantics were important to use software efficiently to collaborate with sighted users as both providers and receivers of information and to build their own interfaces. Our participants informed us that they did not make decisions about the visual aspects of their websites independently. That is, no participant decided the template for their website and no participant pushed web updates to their website independently without having them checked by a sighted person. Our participants put this frustration together by saying, when I got a website, I had a friend set it up for me. He chose a template that is supposed to be more accessible. I don't really know what he did. He turned off the Visivic editor, made a couple of tweaks to make it easier for me. I hate that I don't know what he did. Here, our participant voices her frustration as she does not know what it took to make her website look the way it did and for her to easily edit it using a screen reader. That being said, our users did express the desire to build visually appealing interfaces. Uh, our participant reflected after performing our lo-fi prototyping activities and said, I'm really, really bad at this is what I understood. It's also very interesting to understand and appreciate the more commonly used websites and know about them so that you can better design your own website. All that I really cared about are things that visually might look awkward, but how they exactly look, I don't care that much. If I think about it now, maybe it's not the right thing to do. Maybe you want to understand how the layouts actually look and make some contribution there. Here, our participant expresses his des desire to contribute to visual semantics. Our participants did have some mental models of visual semantics, the strongest being of smartphone apps and the weakest being of websites as they would appear and browse from a desktop. This presents interesting implications for us to think about as to how can we convey this understanding that exists on smartphones to render, to, to, teach the graphical user interfaces on desktop interfaces. Our participants had approximate notions of size and shape. They associated size with functionality. And I recall our participants saying things like, oh, this element is so annoying, so I'll put it two sticky notes wide. Our participant had approximate notions of shape where they used straight lines of wiki sticks to represent links and circular blobs of Play-Doh to represent buttons. Our participants taught us a ton about how, my, how we might want to describe user interfaces. They used absolute positions to locate elements like x, y coordinates. They used reference points like edges and corners. And they used locations of a few elements to describe other elements of a user interfaces. And this presents interesting implications for us to think about how we might want to teach voice interfaces to describe user interfaces so that they can teach us how to use GUIs. Based on these findings, we recommend Fuser research into improving descriptions of visual semantics and to create more experience to, to support prototyping by blind or low vision users. And with this work, we hope to deviate from normative notions on what that we might have about what blind or low vision users can and cannot do about with visual semantics and that they should have the same visual semantics experience as sighted users. 
And to conclude, I would like to thank my colleagues through Jane and Kelly Mack and our funding agencies for supporting this work.